Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we need to take a little bit of a look at the ban list and rules change announcement that came around with Chilling Rain. Now, look, if there was a new banned card, this video would have been called something along the lines of... ADP banned in the Pokemon trading card game. They're just going to let it rotate out of standard. It's, it's not going to be banned. Maybe one day and expanded, but not today. So we don't have any new banned cards. And I'd like to think the title, thumbnail, etc. made that fairly clear. What we do have is actual factual rule clarification regarding what counts as a rule box Pokemon. And this does actually have pretty, pretty significant impacts in some formats in standard no and honestly in expanded no as well but when you start getting into other formats it gets kind of interesting now the announcement came out and it said this starting with the sword and shield battle stars expansion the term rule box was introduced into the pokemon tcg a Pokemon with a rule box refers to any Pokemon that has a text box that says the word rule, such as V-Rule or Tag Team Rule. This will also apply to any potential future Pokemon that may have new rules that don't exist currently. As of right now, here is the list of Pokemon that are considered to have a rule box. Pokemon V and Pokemon V Max, which is fairly understandable. Pokemon GX and Tag Team Pokemon. Remember, Tag Team Pokemon are also Pokemon GX, so that makes sense. Prism Star Pokemon, Pokemon EX, Mega Revolution Pokemon, and Pokemon Break. And we'll get more into some of those in a moment. But what is interesting is that Pokemon have come out and said pretty gosh darn clearly... These are the Pokemon that have rule boxes. So anything older than this just don't count. And you'll notice here we are very much in Gen 5 with Pokemon EX. But nothing older than the Pokemon EX in Gen 5. Now, in terms of for the future, I mean, come on. We know this at this stage, right? V-Union. Now, it's very sad, of course, because we found out recently that V-Union have actually gone and been delayed. It's going to be slightly later. It is now apparently the 20th of August where these are going to be released. Whereas before they were going to be released on 30th of July. So we are still kind of two and a half months away from seeing them. Which is a little bit sad but we'll, we'll have to cope with that. But although we don't really know what the Union are. It's pretty clear at this stage that the Union are going to be some kind of new kind of Pokemon. And I would be very, very surprised if they didn't have a rule box. And these are things to think about. I mean, if we go to Battle Stars, there were two Pokemon. And it's funny, I've seen people like tweeting, oh, Pokemon went to all this effort of introducing rule box as a terminology. But, you know, th th they introduced exactly one card in Battle Stars that used the phrase. And no. No, they didn't. Now, everyone remembers about Empoleon. Empoleon says, as long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, your opponent's basic Pokemon in play have no abilities other than rule box Pokemon. So it turns off abilities of non-rule box Pokemon, but rule box Pokemon will be fine. So something like Jirachi will lose its ability, whereas Zacian V will keep it, which honestly sounds a little bit mean to me. Like, why are we helping out these rule box Pokemon so much? I'm not sure we should be. I don't know. That's a discussion for another day. And people always forget about Cherim. Now, Cherim has the ability Spring Bloom that says as often as you like during your turn, you may attach a grass energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon that doesn't have a rule box. And then there's this little Pokemon V, Pokemon GX, etc. have rule boxes. But like I say, we've now got the official clarification. So if you want to play, for instance, a Rillaboom V Max deck, you cannot use this to accelerate energy to Rillaboom V Max because Rillaboom V Max has a rule box, which is actually genuinely quite sad because Rillaboom V Max does 150 damage but discards up to free grass energy, doing 50 more for each one discarded. So with this, you could potentially do a pretty consistent 280, and that would make Rillaboom VMAX a much better card. And given how many of these I pulled in English and Japanese packs, 
weird how many Japanese ones I have, considering I don't open that many Japanese packs. It would be nice if it was good, but it's not. So sorry about that. And then, of course, this is continuing as we move forward in Chilling Rain. We've got Path to the Peak. And Path to the Peak is maybe one of the most important of them. Because Path to the Peak turns off abilities of all rule box Pokemon. It's basically Power Plant. But instead of GXs and EXs, it's any Pokemon with a rule box. Which means that in Expanded, it will just cover a whole bunch more Pokemon. But it also means it's kind of future-proofed, and it will do weird things like turning off Tapu Koko's ability, which of course is huge for lightning Pokemon. To put simply, the term rule box is very important. Like, any Pokemon with a rule box now will be left without an ability because of Path to the Peak. Won't allow you to accelerate energy to it with Cherim, but if it's basic, will keep its ability through an Empoleon. These things are, frankly, pretty gosh darn important. So it's nice to have the clarification. And essentially, what Pokemon have done is gone right. In proper official tournaments... We only use a standard and expanded format. So they've gone through and they've looked at the standard and expanded format. And they've made a list of all the rule box Pokemon and they've gone, right, this counts. And then they've basically gone, well, there might be Pokemon that count before this. But quite frankly, they're old. They are in formats other than this format. And we don't particularly care. Incidentally, I don't see this as any kind of negative it's just a decision pokemon have made and i have no real problem with this now level x's let's take level x's as a nice example because if we look at level x's and we look at the terminology that pokemon have actually used it kind of works now let's take snorlax as an example snorlax clearly has a quote unquote rule box in the there is a box there that gives additional rules. Put this card onto your active Snorlax. Snorlax level X can use any attack, poker power, or poker body from its previous level. But if we put this next to, for instance, in Polion V, you'll notice the rule box says V rule. If we put this next to something like Seismitoad EX, it says Pokemon EX rule. If we put this next to something like the aforementioned Tapu Koko, it says Prism Star Rule. So these newer style Pokemon, not only do they have rule boxes, but they actually really put it out there. They've got rule in the kind of heading of the box. That is not what we see with older things like Snorlax Level X. They have a quote-unquote rule box, but it doesn't say Level X rule on it. And incidentally, this for me is, is the big kind of difference between them. We don't have an actual phrase there that says Level X rule like we do for, well, EXs, GXs, things of that nature. If we, for instance, look at Latias Star... Now, this is from way back in the Deoxys set. There is clearly a quote-unquote rule box there, but it doesn't say Pokemon Star Rule. It just says you can't have more than one Pokemon Star in your deck. So I think that is really the, the big difference between them there. The fact that it actually says on these newer cards, so-and-so rule, whereas on the older cards, it doesn't. I think that is essentially where we come down here. So what's important? What can we really take away from this? Well, first of all, we have, as it stands at the moment, and it's not going to last too long because the Union are coming, but we have an actual proper list of what counts and what doesn't. We know that moving forward, anything that has that rule box thing there that says so-and-so rule will count, like the upcoming V Union. But we also know that if you're a fan of the Unlimited format, or things of that nature. If you want to be playing some kind of weirder legacy formats. Then rule box is not a term which is going to have as much relevance. You're not going to be able to play Path to the Peak in your unlimited deck. To turn off the abilities of some of these more pesky older Pokemon. And I know for a lot of you that's not going to have a huge amount of relevance. But I know there are people that watch this channel. That play unlimited or other such formats. 
and that is going to have a little bit of an impact. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We finally have a proper in-depth explanation, a proper clarification as to what is and what is not a rule box Pokemon. And it is actually... It's a bit more restrictive than we thought, because I always assumed that things like level X's would count, and it turns out, no, they don't. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to hear from you guys. Are you happy with this? Does this make sense to you? Or are we fuming? Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio or you can do exactly that but by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves till next time would ya thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching ptcg radio